As I'm sure all of you have noticed, PTC cameras are super popular these days. Another type of camera is when you have a, a small uh, camera which is uh, possible to squeak in everywhere. A box camera, we call them point of view cameras, or in, I would call this a box camera from PTC Optics. And the, the exciting thing is when these two things are fused together into a camera that does actually PTC, but has no moving parts inside. And that's what we are looking at today, a PTC Optics E PDC, so electronic pan tilt zoom in this camera. So if we look at it, on the back side it has two SDI connectors. One of them will give you the full view of the 4K sensor in the camera. You're not getting a 4K output, but you're getting an HD version of the full sensor image. And the other SDI output will give you the cropped area, the region of interest, which we can control with a joystick from a Skyhoy controller. So we took one of the PDC controllers from the Skyhoy range, the PDC Fly, and applied it to control this camera as if it was a true pan tilt and zoom camera. So that's what we are looking at, but we are really only moving the region of interest around on this one. The camera is powered by PoE, it also has an NDI option and it's an affordable camera. So what more can you ask for? Wonderful little product. And we'll now look at how the Skyhoy controller can uh, work with this camera, how you can adjust um, not only the pan tilt zoom and recall presets, but you can also access all the parameters. So, you know, probably you know Skyhoy products already, but if you don't, we make universal broadcast controllers and they are insanely flexible. We also go to a great, uh, go through a, a, a lot of struggle often to do specific support of the features of the product we control. So with this camera, we actually looked into the action list from the camera, made sure that everything the camera supports is also integrated in our uh, integration in the PTC Fly. But now let's look at the features of the controller itself. So um, we usually, and this is a standard configuration, I'll get back to that at the end, but we have a camera selector. Only one camera, but if we had five cameras, you could select any one of the five cameras there. Notice how we have small displays that show you the name of the camera, camera one, two, three, four, five. You can of course label that differently if you want, and that's the power of the uh, OLED displays on the Skyhoy controllers. If you press the shift key here, then you'll see we are toggling forth and back between camera selector and preset selection. When you look at the Skyhoy controller range, you'll see that we have other PTC controllers too, like the PTC Pro. And on that one, you find specific keys for camera selection and for preset selection. But in this case, we have shrunken it down to a, a smaller form factor and we reuse the same keys to give you that kind of uh, access. So um, from the camera selector, we can go to the preset selection here and we can also page forth and back. Now let's just see some action, right? So I have camera number one selected and I can use the joystick. So watch the image from the camera. I'm now rotating the joystick to zoom out and I can also zoom in once again on my target here. Let's see if I can obtain a, um, a zoom there. You see forth and back. I can also do it quicker. So we have various speed options. There are like seven speed steps embedded in the Visca protocol and I can use the pen tilt and zoom to the side to move the camera of course. So this is about as slowly as I can move it, but I can also move it quicker like that. So this is a pen tilt and zoom you can use to operate the electronic PDC in this camera. Now I want to show you the presets. So let's create a few presets here and that comes in, in play when we change over to the preset uh, bunch here. So let's, um, let's make a preset where we zoom in on the uh, two Skyhoy controllers we have right here. Okay, there we go. So I press and hold this key to save the preset. Good. Then I want to have a um, white shot. And this is my white shot. I will put that on preset number five. I want to have a little closer in here. Okay. This one, save it on four. Okay, then I want to make a few really close ups here. Okay, save that on two. And I want to have the headphones in my shot right here. Okay, and I save this on three. Now, when um, we recall a preset, you'll normally see a PTC camera is just moving around, but guess what? With an electronic PTC camera, you don't need that. Actually, look at the, the output now. I just recall preset number one, and it jumps right over to it because it's a region of interest in a 4K image. The same with number two. So it actually becomes a little video switcher here, right? This camera now takes the role as three separate cameras, and preset one, two, 
and three is essentially just switching between the two. So you could have an interview situation filmed with the same camera. Go between camera number one, camera number three, camera number one, camera number three, and so on. So uh, we can, of course, get the, the wide shot right there. So it becomes a little video switcher. And that's pretty neat. Um, let's look at the other things we can do. So preset selection, camera selection, but on the upper edge of the shift key, we are cycling through various menu options for settings. Okay, so in the uh, manual exposure mode, I'm currently uh, able to change the shutter speed. Let's try that. We are at 100 here. We could uh, change it to, um, to something else like uh, 130 if I want to have a uh, different uh, setting there. And um, we can also go in the other direction, of course. Now I have some flicker from my lighting in the studio. So that's the exposure mode. You have also access to um, brightness mode, iris, shutter, manual, and auto mode using these uh, various options uh, here. I like to have it at the manual mode. I just want to let a little more light into um, the camera like that about this. And I maybe want to gain the camera just slightly. I think this is a nice image right now. Let's move on to see what else is in there. Uh, of course, white balance, very important for cameras. It's currently at auto. We have white balance uh, sensitivity for auto white balance. You can set from low, medium, and high. That's also found on fairly many Visca cameras. And finally, we have color temperature over here, which is relevant if you choose some of the other ones. So we have indoor, we have outdoor, we have one push where you can trigger it over here if you want to do that. We have manual mode. And then we have variable mode. And with variable mode, we can see the difference coming from changing my color temperature on this knob. So that's all the white balance options that you will find in this camera. We'll just bring it back to auto here. And we should see the camera is now adjusting back to the original white balance that we um, had just before by automatically detecting it from the image. So other features that you find in a lot of PTC cameras would be luminance, contrast, and hue. Luminance is like brightness. So this is a, the fake way of uh, increasing brightness on your camera, while contrast is giving you a more hard image like this or an absolutely milky image like this and even gray. So when you bring it all the way down to zero, the funny thing is that the contrast being zero, it's just, yeah, 50% gray. So maybe that's an uh, awesome way to um, have 50% gray if you are missing a color generator or something. So, um, but let's keep the contrast about its uh, standard level, which is about uh, eight or nine. Actually, if you press and hold the button, it's usually resetting to a default value coming out of the camera uh, or the factory resets. That's often the case on Skyhawk controllers. The hue is also helping if you want to um, mistreat your image in some way. No, I mean, just changing the, the color circle, if you will. And uh, so you can use that to do some kind of adjustment as well. So these are found on a lot of PC cameras and available on your Skyhawk controller. Of course, we also have focus management, so you can change between manual and auto mode. You can adjust the focus here. And even we have a speed limitation for focus adjustment so that each time you turn the knob, you, you define the step size of your focus adjustment. And we also have um, on-screen menu available, actually. So if I press and hold this one, I'll bring up the on-screen menu of the camera. And then uh, you can use the joystick to navigate around here. Then you can uh, typically enter one of these on uh, using the encoder. And then uh, when you're in one of these menus, you can um, change values like I'm, I'm doing right now. Then you can dial back and exit the menu again. We need to go down to the exit point right there. And we are um, out of this menu, I think. How is it sometimes a bit confusing there? But we, and, and the point of the on-screen menu really is that although most of the features may be broken out on buttons, and notice the word maybe because it depends on configuration. Um, we usually integrate as much as we can find in the camera. Some features are not brought out into the protocol. In that case, you would have to access it through a menu system. And giving you access to the on-screen menu allows you to do absolutely everything. But it's not at your fingertips in the same way that it currently is by using the knobs and buttons on the controller. So if we move on, you can see on the final screen here, we have PTC uh, speed limitation for the operation of pan tilt and zoom. So I can bring that down to like 50% um, uh, if I want to make sure that my, my pan is slower, I can do it uh, even more here. So you can see full swing on the joystick, it's just moving fairly slowly. If I turn it all the way up to 100, you'll see that it's gonna move much quicker. And of course it, it bumps into a limit on the side because the the, the region we can operate within obviously is the one captured by the sensor in the camera. Let's just bring it back to my 
that view, my uh, original wide shot. Final features we put in has nothing to do with this camera, but take a look at this. We can increase the brightness of the buttons and the LEDs, or we can decrease it to an absolute minimum, which is nice if you are in a very low light environment, your eyes shouldn't uh, take damage from looking at your Skyhoy controller. So of course you can adjust the intensity of the OLED displays and the LED buttons to fit the environment you're operating in. Very important feature as well. DHCP IP address can be set here. And that's basically it for the things that you find in this controller. So I already mentioned this controller has a lot of flexibility with the OLED displays. We have Ethernet connectivity, one cable, Ethernet and power to the camera, just like the PTC Optics camera. Wonderful idea. And then apart from being that universal controller that works with this one, we have many other cameras it work with. You can also combine things. You can connect to video switches. So installing device cores allow this controller to be much more than just an EPTC controller. It can interface with many other pieces of equipment to create a very user-friendly solution for you. So that's some of the um, unique features of this product. What you have seen today is a default configuration. It comes out of the box with this or you basically check it off on a website, press a button, it gets onto your controller and all you need to care about is the IP address. But anytime you want, you can go into the web interface of the PTC Fly and adjust, change, modify, customize, but it's up to you when you want to do that. You have the flexibility because Skyhawk controllers are truly universal broadcast controllers. Mm -hmm.